Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM. Yes, it's Desert Island Discs. My name is Simon Cassiate. Last week we had an incredible guest, a man that has served distinguishingly as an international civil servant for over three decades. He's lived the life. He's been there. He's done it all. He's now been in the country of his cradle, Uganda, now for many years, perhaps over a decade, yeah. in blissful retirement. Last week, he joined us to share with us his life story. He returns to share with us more of his life story, considering the fact that last week, time was not an ally. Welcome back to the program, OHT, Dr. Jones Yosia. I love the combination of your names. Thank you very much, Simon. It's really been uh, wonderful for me to be back mm -hmm. at this program. And continue your life story. Yeah. So yes. at the time we broke off last week, we were talking about you having married three years into your career at the UNESCO yeah. in Paris. Then, of course, you went that direction, <coughs> had three children. Uh, the, the, the marriage you realized after three decades that, you know, you are living better off apart than together, mm. and you moved on. Mm. Now let's go back to your UNESCO career. Right. What exactly did you do at UNESCO? Just take us through the rise. Okay. The assignments. All right. The engagements. Okay. Uh, when I first joined, I was of course again a probation a probationer. I was assigned to a, a section uh, which was dealing with the UNESCO fellows, UNESCO students. Because when I joined, it was a period when uh, most of the African countries, even Asians, were, I would say, Africanizing uh, in the area, especially areas of education, areas of science mm -hmm. and technology, even all, all various areas, because most of the time, most of these areas were being held by Europeans. By uh, the independence, the African countries wanted to Africanize. And UNESCO played a big role in training uh, nationals mm. to take over the roles of the um, outgoing um, Europeans. And so uh, UNESCO fellowships were very popular. UNESCO was giving fellowships to various uh, cadres mm -hmm. to go abroad uh, and study. And then UNESCO had a program to follow up these students. First of all, to ensure that they return to their countries of origin after the training. Uh, secondly, that they are placed in areas for which they were trained. So that they would, they would follow up the students, but with their governments. To ensure that the governments don't take somebody who has been trained as a, a teacher of science, then make him a political cadre. Or make him, you know, so that was the, the, the first section I worked in what is called the follow-up of UNESCO uh, fellowship holders, both as they're studying the universities and also as they go back home. Mm. That was the first uh, task. Uh, was, that was a disc, kind of a disc uh, kind of work. Now, sometimes we visited a few universities where they were studying to see their conditions of study. That was the, the first part of my now traveling abroad uh, traveling to other countries uh, to see these students. At, at, you know, uh, and then I was moved to uh, another section with a promotion because, as I said, I joined as P1. Uh, maybe I should just briefly talk about these grades. Yes. Uh, P means professional. Mm -hmm. You're professional, but uh, level one, which is P1, you can go to P2, you go to P3, you go to P4, you go to P5. That's the end of now the technical people. Then you go to D as a director. Ah. You become director D1, director D2, director D2 is principal director. So you have some, so have several directors under you. So then I move on to uh, another section uh, from that following up of the uh, students. Uh, this was operational programs. Now, as UNESCO uh, comes into a country, like here, they, they, they set up the Curriculum Development Center. We didn't have one before. Uh, so, because we were following the British, the British uh, curriculum, yes. So, Uganda had to set up its own Curriculum Development Center. 
Now that center becomes a project, UNESCO project, where UNESCO brings those Europeans or Indians or Germans to initiate it. And there's a, a, a national homologue whom they train to take over, as they also train other specialized areas, mm -hmm. curriculum uh, in the curriculum. Now that project it needs to be supervised by UNESCO headquarters. Mm. So my section, I was in that kind of supervision. It's called operational activities. And then there are sections for Africa, for Asia, for, for Latin America, for Arab countries. And I was literally, I always wanted to be in Africa. So I was in charge of, I was called the field program officer, following up projects in, in Africa. And then from there, I was sent to uh, Senegal. Dakar. Dakar. Why? Because the, the, the data general, for the first time, UNESCO had an African data general. Uh, wow. A man called uh, Amadou Amata Mbo. Mm. He was from Senegal. So uh, then it was a period where also UNESCO wanted to decentralize. Instead of doing everything from Paris. from Paris to go visiting different countries to provide the programs, they set up these regional offices. I talked last week about our uh, regional office in Nairobi, in Nairobi mm -hmm. which covers science programs in Africa. That was part of decentralization. Before it would be in, in UNESCO in Paris, but now decentralized to Nairobi for science. Mm -hmm. Then Dakar became the center for education in Africa. In Africa. Now, of course, um, Bo being a Senegalese, he, uh, put in he quite chose, a, he chose Dakar, well, which was Africa. It was a very good place, and wanted to, really to, 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 to boost it. So he chose, I think, were two of us. He chose those they thought were sharp, bright enough to go and man. So I went with all my programs I was supervising. And stationed in Dakar. Station Dakar supervised those programs from Dakar. So that was another promotion. Wow. Uh, to a P3 by now. Now, then when I got there, I got stuck. Because I should have been there for about two to three years to set up the, that decentralization. And go elsewhere. And then go elsewhere. I'll go back to Paris. But my director, I think he saw something good in me. He did not want me to, to let me go. But because the position I was holding was a P3 position, he could not promote me to D1, to D2, to, to other places. So, so, but then, uh, so, he, so I got almost annoyed. He kept me for eight years. Woo! So I was there for eight years. In fact, I had uh, uh, my uh, third child there, uh, a girl, uh, Mimi. And um, uh, then I had to almost rebel. To move I out. can imagine. I had to apply for a position which was in Sierra Leone, which was P5. Remember that I'm now jumping mm. to P4. This position was P5. Now it was taking over all the UNESCO activities in uh, Sierra Leone. Basically education, but also all the other areas, because I was the only uh, UNESCO staff, senior staff at that time in the Sierra Leone. So then from there, there was need uh, for some staff to go to Lagos. There had been a lady, uh, Dr. Gordon, who had been from, who was from Jamaica, who uh, was declared nona grata by the government. Wow. We never knew what... Why? Uh, why. We never knew why. So up to today? Up to today, I never knew what uh, happened to Mrs. Gordon, Dr. Gordon. And then there was need to have somebody uh, to go there. Of course, I, uh, I wanted to take the adventure. And I'd been dreaming of living in Lagos because I had heard so much about Lagos. Mm -hmm. But it is a double. You, 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 are, you are apprehensive. That's, that's but you're time curious. That you're curious. So I applied for it, and I went to Lagos. I went as educational advisor, because that was her role. I was, I was not the director of the office, but she was the educational advisor. Mm -hmm. But covering more than, than Nigeria. The, the Nigeria. Benin, uh, Republic, Togo, and Ghana. 
and Nigeria, of course. And then while I was in Nigeria, uh, there was, uh, that was the time of uh, President Abacha. Mm -hmm. Sunny Abacha. Sunny Abacha. And then UNESCO had wind that uh, Abacha was planning to uh, kill, I should use the word. Oh, kill, uh, uh, No, to kill um, uh, Wale Shoenka. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a big, uh, of course, he's, I think, the, the only uh, laureate or Nobel Prize in, in, in literature. Mm. So Maida Rajeno, who was the then a Spanish gentleman called uh, Federico Mayor, mm -hmm. calls me on the phone. He says, you know, we've had this news. We cannot risk this. Mm -hmm. Please get a guy out of Nigeria. So I make arrangements, take him to the airport. With, of course, he's got his national passport. I gave him a, a ticket. But his passport is seized by the army. Mm -hmm. So he has to go back to Lagos. Luckily, he was not touched. I mean, he was just refused to leave the country. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had to now to find a way. I called the DG, said, look, this is what I said. He said, look, all I want the guy out. How you do it? It's, it's up to you. So then I asked for a UN receipt, which I get after some time, you know, with a lot of uh, technicalities and all that. Um, so he gets it. There's a passé is that special document. Special, it's a special passport. passport. It's the UN passport, passport in, yes. in other words. So he gets it. Which cannot also be picked by any polity. No. So we take the airport. Same thing happens. They take it. The, the soldiers take the, <laughs> the passport. So now I have got to find other ways of... I could not call back the guy. Mm -hmm. The said, look, no, no. So because it said, me, I don't care what you do. Do it anyway. Get the guy out. So I uh, find a way of running him through uh, a panya. Luckily, between Nigeria and the Republic of Benin, it's like between Kenya and Uganda. Uh, the, 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 the frontier is a bit perforous. You can find a way of getting through there. So I get him with an old car and uh, dress him up. Like a touring. Dif <laughs> differently and mm -hmm. he crosses to Benin. And then I've got to send his passport, I mean, I mean to, to send his ticket to, uh, to, to Benin. That is also easy between Air France, mm -hmm. Lagos, pay in Lagos, and then they send the ticket to Benin. The guy is, can fly off now to Paris. But he has no, tic has no passport. So I have to call uh, UNESCO in Paris to tell them that, yes, we su have succeeded. The man will be on Air France flight uh, this, this and this. 5520, but, no but no passport. So I'll find a way of going to the airport and get him into the country. But I cannot call Paris because my phone at home is tapped. is tapped. So is my phone in the office. What do I do? Now I've got to call my spouse, who by then mm -hmm. was living in the uh, in UK with the children. I don't want to take the risk of disturbing the education, taking mm. them to Lagos, mm. and so they were living in the UK. So talking to her in Luganda, and then <laughs> she, uh, so she now transmits the message to, to Paris, to UNESCO Paris, to ask them to receive Wale Shoenka, who has no passport. So of course the government was very annoyed with me. And uh, I was convened the Foreign Affairs Minister, mm -hmm. Ministry, and the minister showed me how angry he was and all that. Like as he was, you know, bullying me and uh, the phone rings and it's the president calling him mm -hmm. to the president's office, mm -hmm. which is known there as Asirok. Asirok. Meaning? It's just a name. It's uh -huh. just, the rock, I think there was a rock where they put this. So they put uh -huh. Asirok. So as the guy rushes out with some files, leaving me there, he did not tell me anything, whether I should stay or wait for me, he just rushes out. And then the, the secretary comes in and uh, asks me, uh, uh, Director, do you still want to see the minister? I said, no, the minister convened me here. Uh, so tell him what to do. He said, you know, I advise that you leave as soon as you can. 
Now, I don't know whether she meant me leaving Abuja to go back to Lagos, because the Foreign Affairs Minister was now was in Abuja. Abuja. And I was, my office was in Lagos. Of course, I had come by air from Lagos to Abuja. Mm -hmm. So when she says, leave as soon as you can, I didn't know whether she wanted me to leave Abuja as soon as I could, mm -hmm. or leave uh, Nigeria. I took it both ways. So I took the first flight back to Lagos, and I called up my daughter, you know, to tell him what had happened. And then he said, in how much time do you need to, to pack up and leave? I think I said about two weeks would be enough. So within two weeks, I packed and... You were out of Nigeria? Out of, of Nigeria. Into? Paris. And then you begin your career there? I begin another career now there. Uh, by then, I'm um, then straight away... In the government in Nigeria feels so bad that yeah. you escaped out of their clothes. No, somehow they did not follow me up. They did not do me any harm. They didn't. Uh, I don't know whether they would have followed it up, but I could not take the risk. So, this is what we're going to do. Let's play our first song for tonight. Okay. Thank you. Which will be? Uh, did, we play, uh, did we play Dear Heart of Jim Reeves? Yes, we yes, did. We did. Uh, let's play something traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, let's play, uh, it's called, you know, the Chikanda dance, uh, it's called Kuzala uh, Kujagana. Uh, Why did I almost guess that? By Irene Namatov. Irene Namatov. I find it very, even the way she did it. The video is authentic. It's really the good. The messaging apt. It's really good. Yeah, let's play that. And we just get a bit groovy. Yeah. Do you sometimes dance? Yeah, I'm not very good at that one. Come on. So they are, you were in Parky? No, yeah. You no. were friends with uh, Eddie Wamala. You should at least know how to words away. But if you can't do that sophisticated one, at least you can. That's the, that's the sophisticated one. <laughs> <laughs> this, where you do this <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful song, well chosen by Oweshtiwa, Dr. Jones. Yosia Chase. Beautiful. Thank we'll you. We'll be right man. back. Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM. Welcome back, it's Death Style and Discs and Owech Tiwa, Dr. Jones Josia Chazi. Sharing with us his life story. He's an incredible gentleman. He has seen it all. He has done all the, you know, all the rounds with the International Civil Service. But interestingly, he was telling us about some of the uh, diplomatic shenanigans he had to cause in one African country. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm not so sure that uh, uh, Abuja is uh, very happy with you many years down the road. But well, you had to do what you had to do. Actually, I don't know because I asked uh, for a visa mm -hmm. and it was refused. <laughs> when was that? This is uh, many years after. Many years. It's about, yeah, because I was back here. I was invited to Nigeria by a rot a rotary. Mm -hmm. there was a f They had a, a, a function there and they invited me and I, I, I had bought my ticket. My visa was rejected. And I could never tell why. So did they go back that far? Because that must have been about more than 10 years. Because that was 1960, 19, no, 1993, mm -hmm. 1996. And this visa request was 2000, maybe and seven. Your name has been flagged in the Foreign Affairs Ministry, perhaps. So seven years. Uh, not More seven. than seven years later, oh, I was surprised. 20 years. So I don't know, and I never wanted to follow it up. I, you know, just yeah, personal non -grant. It wasn't something... Uh, you could be a personal non grant But they did not uh, uh, they brand not issue me. A, they did not brand they me, not, so I They did not verbal or anything. No, there was nothing of that kind. Well, now you know. Actions speak louder than words. Oh, you see? So you so, begin your career in Paris. So again. I go in Paris. Now, when I arrived, because it was... It was uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, um, sudden, it was uh, uh, what you call force majeure. Mm -hmm. 
uh, they had to find me a place. And I had got to be at the level of that because by the time I left, I was director now. I had become director wow. of, the, of the office. So they had to put me in a place which is got sort of... Uh, of Commensurate. The same, same, huh, that's right. So I was put in charge of a unit which is science and technology education. Uh, of course, that, you know, when you've got a PhD in education, you can really jungle uh, oh, and anything, uh, yeah. you know, anything. So I, I did that for a few, a few months, and then I was made a director of relations with African member states. Wow. Um, so that now began a new career. I was, because much of the time I was in Senegal, in Sierra Leone, in Nigeria, I was much more of technical, technical advisor. In now you are. Education. Now you come, you become kind of a diplomat, diplomat. So I was director of relations with the African member states, uh, D1, and then I was in, I had a colleague who was my director at D2, who passes away, oh dear. somewhere in between, and then that again, no promotes me into his position, now as D2. And then above us, there was what is called an assistant general general. Uh, he's like, that is now a minister level. But in, the, in an organization like UNESCO, uh, the technicality, uh, uh, technical staff stops at the D, D1. D1. You got D2, a standard general, you're now getting into a political arena. The next that had, you know, who also want to place his own political appointees. Yes, of level. course. So now my dad had, you know, he had promoted me, I think a few, only a few months, a few, few years, one or two years. And, you know, it takes a long time to be promoted in the UN. So he wants me to go up to become the standard, you know, for Africa, which had been left by a Congolese uh, standard, you know, who had been, in fact, uh, very important guy. He had been the Prime Minister of Congo. Wow. There is a book which was authored by UNESCO, which is called uh, On Education. Oh, I forgot the title. Uh, but I refused the, 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 the appointment. Why? Because it was political. I had followed a career, a technical career, which was secure. I don't want to jump into a position which is precarious. Yeah. So I refuse the point. Go and cook your own time. Aha. Any time now. Any time. Akunywa musup. So the, he was surprised and a bit disappointed, but he understood because I had by then I had on about three years to retire comfortably with my pension. With your owners, and, uh -huh. yes. Now I jump into that one, then I'm dismissed. Uh, In maybe six months. And then I knew this data general was also about to leave. About to leave. So I refused the appointment. And then he says, look, okay, find me somebody of your caliber who can fill this position. I said, fine, thank you very much. And I had a few friends. Mm -hmm. One of these friends was this uh, gentleman from, from Benin Republic. Uh, who had been the ambassador of Benin to UNESCO. Very political, well, very, yeah. very vocal, very, uh, and very good friend. Lifeist, you know, we used to drink wine together, go to restaurants together. So he was a good friend. So I, I, I talked to him. Would you like, you know, I hear this. Of course, I didn't want to tell him that I'm proposing you. I said, look, there is this position uh, open. Don't you think you should apply for it? Yeah, yeah, we would. We're just a very good tip. He of course, he applied, but he had already been. So I told the you know, the guy is willing to take it. So he calls him, fixes him with the post position. Now that guy becomes my boss. I was so happy because he was much more of a francophone and me much more of an anglophone. An anglophone. But we were both, his, his English was not too bad, but he was not as comfortable, of course, as... Uh, so, but the very first time the guy comes in, he becomes terrible to me. Hey, I was shocked. You know, like uh, our offices were not far. 
The next thing he does, he transfers my office with all my stuff down to the undergrounds. The basement? The basement. I, I, I almost go, I was going crazy. I, because I could not, I didn't understand what was happening. And then, if instead of calling me or coming to my office, as you come or come to me if you want to discuss something, you stay in his office and start shouting. And of course, you can embarrass, imagine the embarrassment, embarrassment with my colleagues, uh, my staff. So I go to the general and say, you know what? Thank you very much. I would like to leave. Why are you leaving? What's happening? I cannot cope with uh, Mr. Tijan Sapos. My uh, my boss. Why? But you seconded him. But you know, you brought that man. I said no. I did not tell him that. I don't think he knows it. But uh, we can't cope. He says no, no, no. What do you want me to do? So uh, I, I tell him, look, I'm much more dealing with the relations with African member states. I organize your trips your audiences with the ministers, with the presidents. And he does much more with the cooperation, the projects and the, the funds for, for. So let us do those two sections, me on the relations and he on the cooperation. They're fine. So right there, he calls the director of cabinet and dictates a what? memo to that effect. Mm -hmm. From this day on, uh, uh, Mr. Chaze is going to be in charge of the, the dealing with this directly with me. And then Mr. The, Mr. Sapos is going to be dealing with the corporation, ta 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 ta. Hmm. And this green note is out by the, they call them the green, green notes. If they did coming in, chooses a color. Either there are three colors, either rose, green, blue. I think by that uh, he had blue. So the blue note is out announcing that. He didn't know, he had not known about it. So he comes rushing now to my office. Your Benin guy. Mm. Finally, he now wants to come to your office. So he comes to my office and says, hey, but what's happening? Are you leaving? So you're leaving the department? I said, leaving the department to go where? Oh, you have not heard? I said, no. Oh, you have not seen the note? So he brings me the green note. You've not seen this note? I said, I've not seen it. Please let mm. me see. So I said, look, you know, you are now a standard you know, I am just director. I, what you decide up there, me, it doesn't really, me, I go where I'm, I'm sent. So uh, uh, that was it. So we are separated. And we work, of course, uh, parallel. But when the Japanese comes, because as I said, anticipated, my director, you know, my yo had to leave. Yes. Replaced by a Japanese guy. Now, as I told you, uh, my colleague was very political. When he realizes that this one is leaving, there's a new one coming in, and this man, the one coming in, was a, a, the ambassador of Japan in Paris. Yes. Well, that's where, from where he started campaigning to become the region, next director of UNESCO. So my colleague jumps into his camp, campaigning camp, to campaign for him. Of course, he asks him what what do you, would you like me to do for you? Oh, I'm going to campaign for you on condition that... You suck, Chazi. You, you, ha. He no, said no, no, hey. not suck. Bring back the department together. Because, of course, he was missing me. Hey. He had a very little experience of UNESCO. I had 30 years. Uh, the language, I was much more bilingual than he was. Knowing the people around. So he wanted this to be, us to be back. So the Japanese tells me, calls me to say, look, you know what? It's not logical for me to have two departments working on the same continent. So I'm going to bring the two together. I said, you know, sir, you can do that. And I think it's logic, but without me. Oh. And therefore, I would like to leave. Of course, I was comfortable because I've served over 30 years. I can go home. My pension will not vary too much between the 30 and 32 years. Mm -hmm. So he uh, insists, insists, I say no. I said, no, sir, I am going home. Then he comes up with an idea that, okay, no, no, but before you leave, 
So I thought it was a, 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 you know, a case thing of agreeing with my departure. Before you leave, do me a mission. He had made two commitments to the member states mm -hmm. for his appointment. One, he was going to reduce the expenses of the organization. Two, he was going to bring back the Americans into UNESCO. Into UNESCO, yes. Because the Americans had, had, quit. had quit 10 years ago. And he made these two commitments. So the first mission was from, you know, he wants me to go to, to Africa. Now, Mayo was very fond of Africa. I don't know. He was very fond of Africa. That's why mainly partly why he, pro he promoted me. Uh, that was was always worrying about the Wallace Rangers mm -hmm. being uh, risking being killed. So he was very fond of Africa. <clears throat> and uh, in fact, we travelled with him a lot. So he um, uh, had made too many offices in Africa. Opening up an office, you know, which were very expensive. So the new director general, Koishiro Matsura, knew that if he reduces those numbers of offices, he would be cutting the expenses. Mm -hmm. So he now charges me with a mission to go visiting the various countries in Africa where the offices were, mm -hmm. which were about 20, to convince the president, well, because that level of discussion closing down a UN office is at the level of the president. Mm -hmm. Not even a means out there to say yes or no. So I had now to go visiting, meeting all these presidents to try to explain to them the need for their office to be closed down. And so you have to use all sorts of, you have to, to estimate, to judge the situation. And then either you get something from the government, mm -hmm. like the example was, um, the best was Gabon, which is a petroleum producing country. Mm -hmm. So, and the man there, Bongo, was the president. Very, very proud. Uh, Ali Bongo. Ali Bongo. Mm -hmm. Omar. Omar. Well, Ali is now the one, the, the son. The, one, the son. That is the son. But that's the father, it was Omar. Omar Bongo. So, I tell him that, look, this country is rich. The only reason why the director general is trying to close down this office is because the organization cannot afford anymore. If you can chip in. Maybe I can argue and keep the office going. So, if you can give him the residence of the ambassador, of the, 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 the UNESCO representative, give him an office. Mm -hmm. Maybe pay for his f for, for fuel because, I mean, for, for electricity. Uh, then I can argue and have this, this done. So he accepts. You sign? My sign. And then, out uh, you go. Then his uh, wife is a daughter of the president of Congo, uh, Popular Republic, Sasson uh, Gesso. Mm -hmm. So he puts him in his, his uh, jet. presidential jet with his strong minister, I think it was the Minister of Education, to travel to uh, Congo. Congo Brazzaville and uh, convince them to have their office closed. Wow. Uh, so we go. <laughs> and uh, of course, that was another tough one. But I think I also left that one open. The excuse was that UNESCO had just assisted Congo mm -hmm. to, uh, they had a civil conflict and UNESCO had had helped in the negotiation. I told UNESCO, the director, that look, we have just assisted that country to stabilize. We cannot just close down. Mm -hmm. um, so, but then I got something. They offered us a free office and a free residence. They also produce petrol, you know, so they oh, also yes. reach. So this is how I used, so uh, I closed some, I closed Zambia, I closed Central African Republic, I closed South Africa for something which was interesting. Wow. The minister could not receive me. He was an Indian minister. Mm -hmm. You know, they have uh, that mm. mixture. You see, he had no time for me. So I closed and you shifted and, and, and then uh, left uh, the office in Namibia to do the work which South Africa was doing office. And I was shocked by the end because it's, it's, it's the second large, I mean, the second most important apart from Nigeria. They were surprised. By the time they came back, I had already closed, closed the, the, the chapter. 
so that was so he was very happy with the mission. I mean, there were there were many countries I had to go visiting. Uh, the seed was right on fertile ground. That's right. His so Royal Highness the Kabaka is your friend. Yeah, he's a good. When friend. was your first interaction with him? Oh, my first interaction. Oh, it's for it is far back when when I was still uh, still you know a junior staff in in, in UNESCO. When because he was he was, he was in London, so he used to come. My home was an open. A ground for, for especially but, you royalists considering what your father true. and grandfather had. Been. Yeah, but my grandfather, my father, they had all been involved. My, you know, many of his, you know, his sisters, uh, very good friends. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, Nabaloga went to the same university. Nabaloga is the Lubuga, mm -hmm. is the main principal sister. Went to the same university in, uh, in Besançon, as I say, the best oh. university. In so she also speaks some very good oh, French. Oh, yeah. Oh, she speaks very good French. Wow. She's. So, uh, the other one, for instance, about the Kabaka is UNESCO had been in charge or, resp or interested in monuments. When you talk, you talk of Taj Mahal, mm -hmm. you talk of Kasubi, they were all monuments, but physical monuments. Now, then time came when the Japanese came on the, on the scene, to think that, well, maybe there are also other um, cultural monuments, but which are not physical. Mm. Uh, the, the, the intangibles, like our languages. Like when you, you talk about the, the carnival in, in, in Brazil. Mm -hmm. It's such a cultural event, but it's not... You, you can't find it. You cannot. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So there's a way, there's a need to also preserve them. So they set up a committee uh, which is going to look after, to select, because not all that, you cannot take all the languages. All of them, yes. You've got to defend the, why should we, do you think this language should be uh, preserved, should be, uh, should be on the list of uh, the world, whatever. And uh, so this committee is set up, and they want one royal, because there are 13 members, only 13 members, the whole world. But among those members, it must be a royal. they wanted one royal from Africa. I think another royal from the Arab states, another, you know, because I know that when... So I put up the name, the candidature of Saba Saja. Because, of course... Since you are Saba Gand. Since I was Saba Gand. <laughs> but also, when you talk about, talk about the kings in, in Uganda, for instance, he stands out yeah. that his great-great-great-grandfather the one who introduced uh, the British, who invited the British to come, to bring their Western education. Uh, and along the way, even the French had been, He had also been the president of Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, which has not been the case. With. So, so his CV was strong enough, and he was competing with Ashantene of Ghana. Uh, I think that they were the two finalists. And of course, I was in charge of Africa. You made the choice. So I, I had to help. I had to help. Where would you be had you chosen the ass after him? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, unfortunately, he, he, yeah, and when, he, when he came, I was really impressed. I remember the time, the day he came for that meeting, the first meeting, in his uh, kanzu, white kanzu and a dark suit. They, they were, and then seeing me kneeling down to, to, to greet him to at, greet the, him. at the entrance. They, they were all anonymized. And then, you know, with his English. He has a very good command. He's of got language. a very good command of the language. Uh, the one who prepared his small speech, uh, I think, was a very good uh, speech writer. The way you're looking at <laughs> me, look like you got the guy. <laughs> no, no, the one who wrote that. <laughs> so he presents his speech, his acceptance speech, to be on the committee. And he was appointed vice cha chairperson of the committee. Can we gossip a little bit about His Royal Highness? This program is as old as FM in Uganda. Okay. And from the archives, I'm not the first host of this program. Yeah. <clears throat> but I can tell you without a fear of contradiction that the first guest on this program was in fact His Royal Highness the Kabaka. Wow. So you follow in a long line of oh, uh, distinguished, distinguished uh, people. Wow, I'm really honored. I'm honored. So he was. He was then the vice chairperson. Unfortunately, it was almost at the time when he had just 
really established, we, we had just established the kingdom. So he could not meet the schedule mm -hmm. of the meetings. And so he... He opted. He to opted out. He opted out. Uh, and I think that what you see in that book, those are photographs when that meeting was being held. When the he one came. where he's opting out? That, no, no. The, that's the, one, the one when he was being... Put in the meeting. Put in position. Wow. Yeah. Now, so, yeah, that's it. But now let's uh, take a break. Thank you. But that break is, of course, a musical break. What shall we play? We played main all along, mm. apart from uh, uh, Namakula, who was playing. Uh, and uh, Irene Namatov as well. Irene Namatov. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. She was the lady. Uh -huh. um, mm, that's. Uh, uh, why don't we choose one? Uh, Zairean uh, music because they really dominated the, the music time scene. We were, we were talking about uh, when we were at Makerere, uh, they really dominated the, the dancing, uh, the nightclub world. Um, so why don't you play one from who? Sharamwana, Nbiria Bell, Mario system. No, Mario is what is oh, uh, Franco, Franco, Mario, Mario. Let's not forget that's a 15 minute song. It's eh? a 15 minute song. <laughs> but no, we will, I mean, no, it's your choice. No, no. We will get an abridged version. Oh, Shalemwana is, is just as. No, let's do Mario. You chose him. Okay. Let's do Franco. All right. We'll be right back. It's the Desert Island Discs. Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM. Mario. Two weeks into the conversation, I mean, it never gets better. But for which you had Dr. Jones, <laughs> you see a chazi, has a way of telling his life story. But that's what happens when you have lived a life to the fullest. I sit here and I am uh, awestruck. My joy is literally on the floor. And I'm listening. Kin, and I hope you're following very greatly. Just before we played the long Mario, mm talked about how the Kawaka came in and uh, the arrangements for Kasubi tombs. Now you are posted to New York. Yes. Uh, which came as a uh, big apple. As a big surprise. Mm -hmm. But uh, a wish uh, being uh, coming true. Uh, I had always wanted to uh, I had been to New York several mm -hmm. times on missions. Um, a company that had been at the UN or things like that. But living there as a head of the NSC office in uh, New York, with such a, a big mission. Now, I, of course, the first thing you think about is to go, of course, I had a lot of people jealousing me for that. Uh, a Canadian lady who was a senior, another gentleman, you know, so there were many. Um, and they were staying at headquarters, and I was going to New York. One of them was in charge of a unit, supposed to coordinate uh, my work with the headquarters. But they I go must there. have sabotaged you. <laughs> they, they, they tried. The first, the first uh, thing I think about, of course, go to the foreign up to the into their um, Secretary of State office mm -hmm. to try and negotiate. Uh, and I had good reasons to, to give them. But then I, I could see very quickly that they were not, they were not very keen. Mm -hmm. Even getting an appointment to see just the assistant to, to George Bush or to Colin Powell wow. was difficult. And then I have these people in Paris also not being One very, helpful. very helpful. So then quickly, I decide that that's not the right way to go about it. I tell the region that, you know what, I'm going to do it differently. Uh, but I will need a lot of money to accomplish this mission. I, I tell him I would like to work with the academies. So I work with the universities. I work with the academies, the American Academy, Academy of Biological Sciences, the American Academy of Teachers, Academy, American Academy of, of Sciences. So various academies, and there are so many there. Mm -hmm. And they have these annual meetings. They have their uh, sub-annual meetings. Even where they, these guys show up. Where they, where they show up. No, wh just that, that community. And uh, talking to them, look, 
you know, it's not that UNESCO really needs America so much. But America needs UNESCO. Because how can you be sitting here, a big country, a big scientific, big country like yours, and everything about education for the world is being discussed and decided and you're not part of it. You know, you're not around the table. How do you feel about this? So they all woke up. And I had made so many friends among them. Now, then they started putting pressure on their government to come back into UNESCO. Mm -hmm. And then this also was another uh, lucky moment when America was trying to convince the rest of the world to support them in their attack on Iraq. Hey, you were like, uh-huh. Uh -huh. So they were now coming to, uh, to us, to me, to try and also try to work with the, uh, the other agencies. And Without all. giving more detail, we uh -huh. understand where you're headed. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they put pressure on the American government. And then Bush himself has to come to the UN uh, to announce that America is now coming back into UNESCO. Whoa. I was sitting there in the General Assembly, mm -hmm. and this guy pronouncing, and then they kept a secret. They kept a secret. In fact, I understood later on that it was almost going to, uh, to be sabotaged. Because if Bush was convinced that this message he was going to give had already come out, he was not going to give it. So there he announces that UNESCO, the U.S. Has no longer have, does not have any reason to stay out of UNESCO and the right to join at the nearest possible, possible occasion. It's one of the very few occasions I just felt my tears going down my cheeks. Wow. I could not believe. You had delivered. I had delivered. After how many years of being in New York? Three years only. Just one, two, three years. Three years. I could not believe it. My tears and my neighbor said, but what's happening to you? Because I was just tears going down. I think he had not caught the sentence himself. My neighbor. But he also did not understand what, what you was had put in. Making me tear. And the background no, of the sabotage right. that would have come your way. So then I, I knew my mission was accomplished. I got to now my disappointment. I got to pick up the phone to tell my dad again that mission accomplished. Yes, I've just heard it that the president announced. Yes. <laughs> you thought you were breaking the news. I thought I was breaking yeah. the news. Said so I've just heard him say. So so I said, well now, so now uh, I'm ready to leave. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So now he comes straight to New York after about a week, of course, to thank me for for the mission accomplished, but also to, uh, to request me, you don't usually want to use the word request, to advise me to stay a bit longer, to stay a bit longer for another two years. Because when you're out in the, in the field in UNESCO, you can stay until you are 62. No more, no more retirement is 60. And I, had, I was clocking 60 by the end of that very year. So I was ready to go. So he was ready to give me another two years. And I said, no, sir. We had an, an arrangement, mm -hmm. Americans back to UNESCO. So they returned on, in July. And I made arrangements to leave New York on the 30th of November. And the 30th of November. Of which year? Of 2003. Mm -hmm. I left. Uh, on, on the very night of the same, because if your, retire, your, your, your date of birth is in, that ma is in November, mm. then you have to leave at the very end of November. of November. And so the 30th of November, and nobody could believe. He himself could not believe, because many people in the, in the, in the UN asked ask ask for uh, to tell it a bit longer, a consultant here. And since I left, I refused to undertake any consultation for UNESCO. I've done consultations for friends, for people, for, 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 my, uh, for, the kingdom. for my kingdom. But I refused to do any consultancy for UNESCO because I retired 
And when you retire, you really retire and go back home, which I did. Retirement. Retirement. You have been here. You are living in your dream house. I'm living in my dream house. We're glad you've hosted us there. And I'm glad that I came home. A glass of wine. Because this, as I said, this plot was the last one. On this hill. On this hill of this size when I came home. So if I had stayed for a another week, two years, a week <laughs> another longer, year, you wouldn't have found it. No, I found it. So I came right. I came home at the right time. So what's your typical day I like? I came at the wrong time, at the right time. When um, Buganda was setting up, trying to set up, mm -hmm. um, and I was happy to contribute because by then, as you know, we were working as ministers, but not being paid. Oh, yes. Uh, you had even to pay for somebody sweeping your office. <laughs> I was in charge of, uh, of, of um, royal tombs. So, and they are spread out spread out uh, in Buganda, so you drive there at your, and when you arrive at the tomb, of course there are people who keep the tomb, you they see a minister coming, naturally you've got to behave as a minister. <laughs> so, but it was, it was really, it was a pleasure for us to serve uh, voluntarily, you know, as volunteers. And then at the time when Buganda was setting up uh, Mutesa Onro University, and I was uh, lucky enough to be designated by Saba Sajja as the uh, coordinator of the task force which uh, initiated that university. Uh, and I'm proud. Um, again, we are serving free uh, uh, with very many other people. Uh, I did not do this alone. And then I was retained on the uh, governing council of the university for many years including chairing the academic committee of, of the university. Again, time comes, you feel that you've done your, your part and bow out, which I did. And now you're just leaving a private? I live as a private person. I live, uh, so as I said, I, I now try to write. Uh, my first novel was just for me to get into the writing world because I'd written magazines and I never Your first novel book. is an interesting one here. I've seen it. I've seen a bit of it, but it's something about a love story. <laughs> oh, <you laughs> that is six a, years later. Oh, I have a a copy. Well, don't worry. Don't, don't, don't worry. Yeah. That is six years later. It's a fictitious love story about yeah. people we meet. It is. But it must have been inspired by something. It's bits and pieces. I can. I think it's the case with all the writers. I think what you, you borrow write from different experiences. You, yeah, from different experiences. Some are yours. Some are not yours. You put them together, and then you put together a novel. As a retired grandfather living in uh, this kind of uh, retirement bliss, I must call it. Mm. What's your typical day like? You wake up, brush your teeth, have I wake a glass up, of wine. Yeah, you <laughs> do your toilet, you brush up, uh, and then as soon as I've done my you know, my shower, no, I, of course, I start by doing uh, small exercises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sweat a little bit, um, and then uh, go and take your sh take a shower. Come down for breakfast. I love breakfast. It's, it's the meal I never miss in the day. What time do you have your breakfast? I have my breakfast at eight sharp. Wow! Because I wake up at six, uh, so I to do my gym and then wash up. So by by eight, I'm ready for breakfast. And I'm lucky, uh, all my uh, house helpers are very good timekeepers. Really by seven, in fact. By seven, the breakfast is served, but served in flasks. And the fruits, of course, they, they don't they go don't cold. Go back, yeah. um, so I come down for breakfast. Usually I have it when my wife is here. We, we, we have it together. Uh, but without her, with my uh, nephew, uh, Andrew, who is my right-hand man, we have breakfast. We've got to discuss the program of the day, what we are going to be doing. And then uh, after breakfast, I now start my day. If I'm not having any appointments outside, computer. I listen to CNN. I also listen to CBS, 9 o'clock news. And then the day goes on. And then I come down for lunch, if I'm staying here. By then, I've done quite a bit of work on the computer, listen to CNN and CBS, 
and in NTV, NTV News, that morning in the evening, either at one o'clock or at seven. At seven. And then uh, I keep working uh, till about 10, 10 to 11. I, if there's a comic I can see on the TV, can you imagine? Sometimes I'm surprised seeing a Nigeria <laughs> just relax me a little bit. I tend to, to want to sleep around between 11 and midnight. Wow. And then I wake up. So and I've not cycle. managed to sleep the eight hours demanded of people of my age. <laughs> but I'm managing now six hours. Six hours. Yeah. Before you were doing what, four? Before I was doing four. Wow. That's now cool. I am trying to, 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 to bring myself. Now I am involved in that major work of writing... Uh, a similar story of my work in UNESCO. I'm now right my lifetime, which of course takes me back to my great, great, great founders, and then the extended family. Uh, I belong to big, a, a large family because my grandfather had uh, over ten. I think he had twelve children, all of whom had other children. children and, uh, so I'm trying to bring that story together in one book. Wow! And I'm giving it another two years you have lived in different <coughs> places tested different cuisines but one would be interested to know what's your favorite dish my favorite dish mm. my favorite dish in fact it's difficult to say but depends in Senegal they have got very good cuisine mm -hmm. my favorite dish there is called uh, Puleya Sa Puleya Sa is chicken Cooked in uh, pule yasa. Pule yasa. Uh -huh. So chicken, but yasa. I think is 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 got a lot of uh, onions uh, and ginger. Is mm. is really very tasty uh, wow. sauce. And, uh, and then in, and then in France, mm -hmm. uh, I I would not want to scandalize people. I'd like the the seafood. The, the, snails. the snails, the, the, the crabs, the, 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 I, love, I love that. What about here? Here? In Isi. <laughs> oh, Isi. Uh, <laughs> here it's naturally uh, matoke and uh, good sauce. What is good sauce? Well, groundnuts in uh, no, mushrooms I, or mushrooms in groundnuts? Mushroom <laughs> and groundnuts, but funny enough, I don't like, I like the groundnut sauce. But I've got to put in some meat, meat. sauce. Just like me. Uh -huh. I love my fish. Okay. In groundnuts. Uh -huh. The other way around. That's right. With matoke. That's the with matoke. And then my new house little girl has a way of doing the rice. Mm -hmm. She has made me love the rice. But I have the matoke. Does uh, she cook jollof rice? <laughs> no. She's a... Jollof rice is another good meal, yeah. but it's a bit dry. -ish. It's not. It's like eating desert sand. <laughs> it's, uh, okay. They won't like this. But and how do you like to wash it down? Glass oh. of wine. Oh yeah. Glass of wine, uh, and outside the wine, I love uh, Uganda water gin tonic. That's uh, especially the coconut. It's mixed in heaven. Ah, served on us. Oh uh, <laughs> really? That. <laughs> The coconut yeah. uh, Uganda water, I think we, we, they took too long to produce it. Someone say that after Jesus, <laughs> the oh. next important person is the okay. guy that made coconut. <laughs> coconut, <laughs> coconut Uganda. <laughs> so that's how I, and usually I, 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 I take a drink almost every evening, yeah, for okay. sure. That's possibly the secret to your long life. 77 years and counting. It's yeah. not an easy one. Eh? That's right. And yet you don't look a day older than 70. So. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, but again, it's, 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 I think measure is, is very important. For instance, the wine. I cannot exceed two glasses of wine, however beautiful the wine is. Mm. I no longer have the taste after two glasses. The Uganda water G, I take that quarter bottle mm -hmm. and I drink half or less than half of it with tonic water. And after that, uh, if I take anything more, I, I, I don't feel good. So uh, I think... Everything being done in measure is, is important. But sometimes I fear the Uganda water G almost every day uh, might be a dangerous. But well, I say every day, but not really every day. There are days when I decide, let, us, let me forgive my stomach for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could say that you have done it all and you have uh, lived a fulfilled life. 
But again, you may have an, imbi- an ambition or a bucket list. What is on that list? What oh, my, that? on my list? Mm-hmm. Mm, making sure that my uh, ten-year-old is uh, is well set mm. is an ambition, uh, my wish. Uh, but um, yeah, finishing this book. The, the, the life of my family story. Mm-hmm. Um, many Rotarians, first of all, many Rotarians wanted me to, to become a governor, which I thought was, uh, I'm beyond, it's a bit beyond that, because I've had a chance to serve in Rotary at what I call the, the, the best levels. Um, but many of them asked me to write a book, because I'm one of the few who has been a Rotarian in uh, four different countries, uh, several clubs. I wow. was a Rotarian in Sierra Leone, I was a Rotarian in Nigeria, Rotarian in New York, and most of the Rotarians around have been Rotarians only in Uganda. Uganda. And even in clubs. I've been in several clubs because I started the club in Atete, which was from the square one. I was a member of the club of Kampala, which is the, the, the oldest club in you. And then I'm one of those who set up another club, the Munyonyote Club of Kampala Munyonyo. So they think I should put that experience in a book form. So I've got two or three books I would like to, 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 to write and complete wow. before I leave this, this world. As we close the program, in which indeed has been a very enlightening one, one question doesn't escape the guys that sit on that chair. Well, you may have traveled the world, but you may try to travel your own country. Yes. It's a beautiful country by all accounts. Oh, yeah. If you are to give an opportunity to be marooned or stay somewhere in this country. Yes. For at least a moment. Or for at least a moment? A moment. Where would that be and why? I think it will be at uh, Lusuku Close, uh, <laughs> Prince George uh, <laughs> Road. Road. Which is your beautiful house. Which is my sim- dream simple, house. Uh, humble abode, which, does, uh, which I call my dream house. Because uh, each and every wall, each and every corner speaks to you in a different was life. done to my own dreams. Wow. Yeah. Owestiwa, Dr. Jones Yosia. Chazi. It's been a pleasure having you on the program. I've very been very, very happy to, to be on the program. I must admit, I've heard about the program, but the first time that I've participated, or even uh, now I hope I'll have a chance to, uh, to listen to, to, to this program uh, outside um, the interview room. And I can say, without a fear of contradiction, <coughs> that you have elevated it to a level that we haven't seen in the past. Wow. And we hope that your life story will inspire so many people to realize that we can have a humble Ugandan, born here in Natete, yes. but serve humanity at an international level the way you have done. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm sure it's possible. And we know that, and we wish you long life, but we know for a fact that this world would never be the same if it wasn't for people like you and your thoughts. That said, there would be a, like, there would be a nice song that you'd love to leave with us. What song can we groove to as we say bye? <sighs> what song? You know, uh, I, uh, let's have a Namakula again. Mm-hmm. Um, any Namakula, I think, is, is good. Your voice is just... Uh, beautiful. It's so beautiful. The other week, we had someone choose Singa Simuchara, and they dedicated it to their mother. I oh. believe maybe okay. in the memory of your strong-willed of, of mother. My mother. We're going to say Singa Simuchara. Yes. And that song. I would love program. that. Thank you very it's much. It's been a pleasure having you on the program, but importantly the listeners and viewers who we never take for granted because they could have been doing anything else on this Sunday evening but they chose to be here. And we Thank say, you very much. let's meet same time, same place next week with another inspirational life story. God bless you. Mm-hmm.
Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM. Independent woman, African woman. Desert Island Discs on 91.3 Capital FM.